Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are kicking off our video series on checkmate patterns. And the pattern we're going to be looking at today is with the rooks, what we like to call rolling the rooks. The goal of our series of videos here is going to be show you different ways to checkmate your opponent's king, techniques that you can use to help win in your games, give you that advantage, and start getting you into more winning positions. Now, if we look at the board here, Black has already lost all of his pieces. He's got the lone king on the board, and all we need to do is figure out how are we going to finish him off as white. The first thing that we want to think about whenever we're trying to checkmate our opponent's king is we want to move him to the edge of the board. Well, why is that? In the center of the board, the king has eight squares it can go to, right? And has all these different directions. And, of course, it's on the square of d3 currently. So if we were to checkmate it, we would have to attack nine squares at the same time in order to achieve checkmate. That's an awful lot of work to do when you don't have many pieces on the board. So we need to find some way to push that king to the edge of the board so that we can deliver checkmate. Well, we know that our rooks move horizontally and vertically, so this lovely rook on h2 is already stopping the king from moving forward. It's attacking across here, so we've already cut the king off of the second rank. The technique that we want to use is we want to use our rooks to slowly start pushing this king backwards to the edge. So, how does white start with this? Well, we're going to take the rook that's down on g1 here, not doing very much, and we're going to play rook to g3. Now, like we already mentioned, the h2 rook is cutting off the king from going to the second rank, and the g3 rook is now delivering check across the third. So the black king has to move up to the fourth rank. So let's say he plays king to e4. Well, now we're going to continue that pattern, rook to h4 check. The king can't come forward because the g3 rook cuts him off, and he has to move off the fourth now. So he goes back, king to f5. Well, we want to continue our pattern, of course, but if we were going to play rook to g5 now, that would be a big mistake, right? Suddenly the king could take us. King takes g5. So how do we make sure this doesn't happen? Well, we're simply going to move our rook as far away from the king as possible. We're going to play rook to a3, giving ourselves as much space as possible from the other king so that we can continue with this pattern. Okay, let's say black comes to g5 and now attacks our other rook. Well, once again, move the rook to safety. Move it as far away from the king as possible. That way it takes him a long time to get back to you, and we can continue with our pattern. Now we're ready to keep going. King moves back to f5. Black here is trying to keep his king in the center of the board as much as he can. He knows that if he ends up on the edge, that it's going to be doom for him, and he doesn't want that. Rook a5, right? The b4 rook is cutting off the king. Attack, push him back. All right, I think we all should know which move should come next here. We're going to move rook b4 to b6. The king comes back again. Now our rook can come down to a7 with check. The end is almost near here. We're playing the move king to c8. And now, if we want to use the same technique we used before, that would be perfectly fine. We can play our rook on b6 all the way over to the side, putting that as far away from the king as possible. This is a good way to make sure that we don't make a mistake and blunder a piece. But there's another idea that we can use here as white to make things a little bit quicker if we want. We know the a7 rook is cutting off the seventh rank. And this rook also, because it's on the b file here on b6, is cutting off black's ability to play king to b8. So if we make a waiting move, if we move this b6 rook anywhere on the b file, the only square left for the black king is going to be d8. He's going to have to play king to d8, and then we'll be free to play rook to b8 on the next move. So we can simply play a waiting move here like rook to b5. Once again, any square on the b file would suffice. Black has to play king to d8, and now 
bam, kablooey. That's all she wrote. Rook b8, and we have our first checkmate. That's rolling the rooks. And one of the beautiful things about this is that not only does it work with two rooks, but if you have a rook and a queen, this technique works as well. In fact, it can work even better because the queen can protect the rook so that you don't even end up having to swing it from one side of the board to the other. And it also works if you have two queens, if you manage to push one pawn to the other end of the board. Um, a very nice way to be able to quickly move your pieces, get that king trapped against the edge, and deliver checkmate. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below, and I look forward to seeing those rooks rolling down against your opponents and all the wins that you have yet to achieve. All right, have a good one.